Bernie Madoff was responsible for a multi-billion dollar Ponzi scheme, the largest in US history. Corporations, celebrities, charities, and hospitals all faced financial ruin. Some victims even committed suicide. Bernie Madoff is born in Queens, New York on April 29, 1938 to a Jewish family. He attends the University of Alabama for one year and then transfers to Hofstra University on Long Island. In 1959, he marries his high school sweetheart, Ruth Alpern. A year later, he starts Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities with the $5,000 he earned working as a lifeguard and a sprinkler installer. His well-connected father-in-law refers clients, friends, and family to invest with Bernie. In the early 1980s, Bernie Madoff starts a scheme to defraud his investment clients. Basically, Bernie solicits billions of dollars from his clients, promising incredible returns. But in reality, he never trades with the money at all. He just keeps it for himself. He attracts clients by guaranteeing returns of 1% to 2% a month. And he does it. Basically, he's taking money from one client and using it to pay the return for another. In May of 2000, financial analyst Harry Markopoulos finds financial inconsistencies in Madoff's revenue stream. Markopoulos is baffled. This type of return stream, he argues, simply doesn't exist. But Markopoulos continues to investigate and eventually theorizes that Madoff is running a Ponzi scheme. Markopoulos sends a memo entitled, The World's Largest Hedge Fund is a Fraud, to the SEC, and they still ignore him. But it's only a matter of time. It's hard to keep an illegal operation covert when your client list includes A-list celebrities and just about everyone else as well. So Madoff's family, who still don't know of the scam, start to take notice. One month later, Madoff tells his investment firm that he's struggling to come up with the withdrawals requested by his clients. And then he just confesses. He confesses to his sons that his business is a lie and a giant Ponzi scheme. He estimates the fraud to be around $50 billion. And on December 11, 2008, he surrenders to the authorities and is released on $10 million bond. He's charged with fraud, international money laundering, lying to federal security regulators, and more. On December 15, 2008, a federal judge appoints a trustee to find funds to pay back Madoff's victims, which include around 4,800 people, U.S. and abroad. His assets are frozen, his wife's assets are seized, and he's put on house arrest until his trial. On March 12, 2009, he's found guilty on all 11 charges, and on June 29, he's sentenced to 150 years in prison. His crimes leave a mark on families, companies, and nonprofits. Not to mention the number of regular, everyday families who invested through third parties and will never get their money back. At least two of his fraud victims commit suicide, as well as his son. So it's not just those regular, everyday families that Madoff destroyed with his scheme. He destroyed his own family as well.